When I was living in Tel Aviv, I was basically trying to survive, and one of the ways I was trying to survive is to do my art, and that never succeeded in much money, because I was lost. I mean, I couldn't quite feel myself slotting into, truly into the art, and, and yet the artistic input is an important part of my life. From a photographic point of view, I love those because, I mean, I love them, I love the shape anyway but it's got this outline. So when you do close up on it, it really stands out beautifully. The big question that came to my heart and mind was what do you do when you grow up? What do I do when I grow up? What's my profession? I made a deal with myself, a contract. And I said, for now on, for as long as it takes, at five to five, Whatever I am, whatever I do, I stop for five minutes. Well, if I was in the middle of a, a meeting, so I've got to go out for five minutes. You know, find a quiet, a quiet place, sit down, breathe into it, as they say, and ask the question, what am I made for? I don't know, five to five. There was no reason. It just sounded good. That's when I did it. Six months later, I'm uh, cleaning a cabin in the house, and right at the bottom, I see a prospect from, from a, the, a school in London uh, the London College of Furniture, and suddenly I saw violin making. And I instantly knew, it's as if this is it, this is what I'm made for. The next morning I called the only violin maker in Israel, can I come and see him, can I become a student, can I... And he gave me a little bit of wood with a bit of sharp knife and to carve a little shape of violin. I says, uh, no, no, I mean, you're too old, you won't make it. So I went to England to every single workshop violin maker to become perhaps an apprentice, but it worked out extremely expensive. And basically I ran out of the list and money and I said, well, it was a very, very nice dream, but it's not likely to happen. But at the bottom of my list, I had David Litkin's name which was an amateur maker, but he came to instrument building from a more scientific point. As an engineer would look at it, he, he tried to find a perfect design. I very quickly, uh, at least philosophically, had a disagreement with him. It looked pretty much like Jimi Hendrix in his heyday with a massive afro. I was making uh, guitars at home and one day I got a phone call from Chaim saying he was looking for a teacher and somebody had given him my name at the end of the list and I gave him a whole lecture on guitars on the phone which I think knocked him out a bit. His wife encouraged him and she said no 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 go back to him. More. I'm much more impulsive than David. When I get an idea in my head I just go and do it and often David has to put the brakes on me. He will sometimes just have the idea and I think it sort of grabs him and he decides, right, I'm going to do it. 
So we'll just go and pick up the first thing that looks like will be right for whatever the idea is. And it won't necessarily have followed the whole thing right through in the design. And uh, because I'm not so impulsive, I will start thinking about what's he going to do next with this thing. It's not quite centered to this, but uh, it's near enough. I well, I mean, we, I think we exchange roles in this. And it's, uh, uh, you know, so when, when, he, when he needs a father, I'm there. And when I need a father, he's there. You hear that? That was the rattle. That note's clear. That, that means this fret is a bit too high. So there's a remedy. You have to know what you're doing and how hard, but basically. That piece of wood actually comes from a soundboard from an old piano from the 1800s. It, we cannibalized it from a piano on a skip. How oh, you just see it on the street, you know, like the soundboard was was there and we just took it. Thank you very much. Gold dust, you know. So if you take a soundboard of piano that's been played since the 1800s, you've got so much vibrations into that top that makes it like Pandora's box sound-wise. It's like all the sound is hidden in the wood. And as the instrument gets vibrated again, that sound is still there. That Those vibrations that have been in that instrument are still there. No, oh, it's changes. It's amazing. It tells a story as well, you know, like when you look at the grain lines, how wet, how dry, and this, the summers have, have been, whether there have been, there have been a forest a fire, you can sometimes see like a darker mark. It's like history embeds itself in things. You know, what's the story behind the scratch? What's the story behind the crack? So you take a piece of grey old wood, you turn it into something else. As we said, metamorph metamorphos metamorphosis. <laughs> metamorphosis. Metamor metamorphosis. 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 My neighbour was a violinist, where I was, li where I live. Uh, teenager, young guy, and one day uh, he told me he was going to fetch his violin from repair, and um, asked if I'd like to come with. And I had a day off. I was working at that point. I was um, selling cars, yeah, used cars for that. <laughs> I went with him, and it was just local to where I live. A little Chinese guy in a bed sit. We came in and his bed is at one end and at the other end was a workbench with uh, tools, vice, chisels and whatnot on it and all around the walls they were hanging up violins and something just hit me when I saw this. I thought however esoteric it might have been to make instruments. At that point it just seemed like well if this person can do it so can I do it. <laughs> These instruments with more than six strings. I didn't have the beard. I wasn't religious. What do you mean religious? No, no, no. This is um, Malchuva. This has all happened more recently. All my life up to then, I just poo-pooed the whole thing with religion, because we didn't come from a religious family. 
the meaning of life and how what one would or should behave in certain moral type of situations. Good questions, sensible questions. And uh, for me, it sort of tickled me a bit, it sort of aroused my interest. And I started uh, thinking, well, they couldn't have all been wrong for all that time, all the people. You know, maybe it was, I need to look into it a bit, which uh, I did. They integrate the craft into the religion. How you deal with people, trying to be fair and honest. You know, basically we have a, a tenet here. We treat people in a way that we would like to, ourselves to be treated. That's what we're all about, trying to make people happy, fulfilled in their lives. I always feel sorry for traffic wardens. Their greatest success comes with the greatest amount of unhappiness that they can cause to other people. The more tickets they give, the more successful they are, and the more people they've made unhappy. <laughs> what a job. <laughs> We were visiting in South Africa 15 years ago and we saw this house. It was very interesting, so I kind of like, it embedded itself in my mind and when I came back I've painted it. And it's a painting that my wife didn't like, so that was enough to <laughs> pull it aside and it was left. It's a process of another artwork. I mean, this is now the material for another artwork. It just continues, the process continues. It just started off as a painting and then it become a material to a wooden butterfly. The picture wasn't final anyway. I'm actually enjoying the picture more than ever now. Mm. You know, I'm looking at this as, wow, this is a good picture, very nice shape. He's getting pleasure from it now in another way. It's extended its uh, art. It's a double artwork. It's had a dual purpose. Like dual core, a computer. So the, it will be the, the singing picture. When I was a very young child, I mean, there was no, um, there was no electricity in the village I grew up. There was, no, sorry, there was electricity, but only very few places. Uh, amongst them was the uh, Groyser, uh, and he had this old valve radio, uh, which then was uh, 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 really fancy. And outside the grocery shop, there was a mulberry tree. And whenever there was a big occasion, you used to take the radio outside, and the village people used to come underneath the mulberry tree, sit, <laughs> and listen to the radio. It was beautiful canopy. I remember when radio came around and then the transistor radios came around, uh, I used to love jazz. I used to put that little transistor underneath my cushion and listen to that uh, jazz music fading in and out. I used to come all the way from America every night. That's what I used to fall asleep with. Big band fading in and out of space. So everything felt so massively big. The fruit of that mulberry tree was so sweet. But it's funny, you know, because really, um, what, I'm, what I'm discovering uh, is that 
in my attitudes and feel of life are more similar to when I was a child, going to draw something and it doesn't really ask him, what are you doing? He says, I don't know. Because <laughs> really, I come to work and I play with bits of wood. Improvisation actually relaxes me. My brain actually goes quieter, so I have less noise in my head. It's a very, very high pitch. It's just there in the background. Tinnitus is when the, the nerve uh, that connects your uh, ear to the brain, it's like a filter. And in tinnitus, it seems to allow frequencies back into the ear from the internal sounds. It's probably hearing your blood or your, you know, like things from, from the inside, rather. Possibly, I mean, it's from the army, possibly, from loud explosions from the war. I had a choice whether to be an explosive engineer or a paramedic. So I said, OK, I'm going to be a paramedic. <laughs> uh, I wasn't too inclined militarily speaking. I was having great difficulties as a soldier, so especially that immediately after I got gone to the training and everything and there was uh, I ended up in a war. For me it was a total self self destructive, complete and utter unhappiness. Yeah, you come like anesthetized. You don't, you don't feel it's like uh, there's a pilot when he presses the button and a bomb goes down. Does he? How does he feel? It's so detached. He's sitting in his air conditioning, super duper deluxe model, you know, sat nav and all the rest. But how does he feel? After I came back from the war, I remember taking my uniforms off and swearing never to wear them again. I could not wear the uniform, and I never did. About nine months before I went to the army, eight, nine months before, uh, my brother got killed in the army, actually from a friendly fire. A very gentle guy, and the effects that it had on the family. I saw my uh, family falling apart, my dad losing his mind. It's probably the darkest time of my life. Let's put it this way, I had nightmares till about five years ago. My surname is Lipkin, and there is a famous heart surgeon who's got the same name as me, Dr. David Lipkin. And there was a period where I would get telephone calls to my house saying, is that David Lipkin? I said, yeah. Is that Mr. David Lipkin? I said, yeah. Now, in England, uh, Mr. is another name, a title for a, a surgeon. I call them a mister. I don't know why they don't call them doctor. Mister. <laughs> um, so I get calls saying, is that David Lipkin? I say yes. It's, um, I'd like to consult you about my heart problem and, uh, you know, know if you were able to perform surgery or something. And I was so tempted because, you know, I've got the tools. <laughs> I always used to enjoy wiring. When I was a kid, fairly young kid, I built my own um, amplifier from a kit. Used it a bit. I had a pop group with some friends. I like seeing 
neat connections and there's a slight challenge in it also figuring out like a puzzle in working out the circuit you know because you want a switch to do a certain thing you want a volume control or something else to do a certain thing once you've done that correctly then the, the circuit should work because of my hand it's more difficult now to make the uh, do the wiring <laughs> Any change in one's body health concerns people. You're too young to know that, I guess, but uh, yeah, of course it does concern me, especially as I work with my hands. It means there's certain jobs that I find more difficult because I can't hold things as steady as I used to. Um, my right hand's good, but oh Hashem, it's still fine. I can't tell you how long I can work for, but I can tell you that I'd like to work as long as I can. And I have to trust in God that he will let me, and either way that he will do the best for me, whatever happens. That's the religious side. Just because you don't understand why it's happening doesn't mean that it's not the right thing to happen. I suppose that at one level, it could be seen as a blessing. Um, but I'm not clever enough or aware enough or spiritually advanced enough to actually see that. It reminds me like the other day I went to the IMAX, I mentioned to you. So you can't see the IMAX in 3D unless you're wearing the right glasses. So without the glasses, you can't see 3D. So maybe without spiritual glasses, whatever that is, you can't see the good, the blessing, or whatever, the depth in the spiritual world of what's happening to you. Could be that sort of thing. Sounds good, doesn't it? <laughs> My son just turned 15. When he was younger, he used to play with the tools, grinding, sanding. He doesn't seem to have an inclination to follow me um, in this kind of work at all. But uh, I can tell that uh, he's not sort of attracted to doing this kind of work. He'll do his own thing. Well, I don't think anybody's going to take over. I don't know anybody who will, not at this stage um, of people that I know. So it's the kind of thing that can't really see anybody taking over from us. Um, probably going to make a lot of noise soon. Okay. And, and dust. Yeah, that should be alright. There'll be a little bit of planing down. Yeah. 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 almost spot on we just uh, probably the travel need to go back a little bit when we finish an instrument because we do believe that uh, instruments in a funny way take a life of their own so we start their life with a little bit of uh, um, like a meditation projecting into the instruments our wishes because we feel it improves the instrument because the instrument's alive Tight, don't tighten the first string. Don't tighten. I'm loosening, Baba. Because it's slipping out. If you like, we're the parents. <laughs> we're both the father and we're both the mother. <laughs> so. 
and that's what we do. That's the moment of birth of the instrument.